Hello, you're welcome to ABC News Highlights. My name is Ota Abadai. As usual, we're bringing you news in the country, on the continent, and across the globe. And my name is Nana Kwame Brobe. On to our first story. So, Gabon Army cancels elections and seizes power. Army officers in Gabon appeared on national television and they said that they were annulling the results of Saturday's elections in which President Ali Bongo was declared a winner. Military officials later said that Mr. Bongo had been placed under house arrest and one of his sons arrested for treason. His overthrow would end his family's 53-year hold on power in Gabon. Nana, so 12 soldiers appeared on live television Wednesday morning announcing that they are cancelling you know, the results of the elections, they are dissolving all the institutions of the Republic and that their borders are closed until further notice. Now, this is ending a 53-year reign. Of one family is it a monarchy or a democracy hmm. the response to that was more um shocking because the people seemed liberated as they partied and celebrated on the streets of um, gabon following the coup i think this goes a long way to say that people were tired of whatever that rule had become it had become monarchy it had become um, it had become wrong it had become um just authority autocracy basically, and the people were tired of the fist hand that they were being ruled with. So yeah, they, they're celebrating. About. What are the consequences that will come with the coup? Exactly, which is one that um, I think everybody is worried about, the international community as well is worried about it, and they're speaking on it. But one thing that um, basically really bothered me when it comes to what the international communities um, were saying was that um, a spokesperson for is it the European Union mm -hmm. said that even though this will go a long way to um, further infuriate the political unrest mm -hmm. in uh, in Africa, it's also a problem for Europe. And I, Why I just, is it a problem exactly for I found it really upsetting that that um, he would be able to say that. So it is a problem for Europe because what we cannot milk the African continent again or. Well, word because we are human beings and you know uh, democracy should exactly and that was said by joseph borrow who is the european union's foreign policy chief mm. well the french prime minister elizabeth Bourne has also said the country was following the situation closely and would um act soon so yes that's that's what's going on well, now do you know that gabon is one of africa's major oil producers and yes 90 percent of the country is covered you know by forests it is it gives you uranium and oil mm -hmm. too so what should i call them colonizers yeah to the west mm -hmm. yes so when the person says it bothers them it bothers me it bothers me that yes, yes that <laughs> even in this time they are the center exactly it's of, about you of yes of who is going to um not benefit from this it's not the african continent no, it's exactly. not the people it is europe you. that is going to bother um is going to be bothered i found it very upsetting as well but then if um this coup as is confirmed it's the eighth coup in the former french colonies in africa in the past three years no no this begs a question what is is it a, a, is there a rise of coups in africa because you know colonialism has you know read its head in a new form of neo-colonialism neo exactly yeah. and people are tired and africa must take you know um, it's safe to say that, and it's more prevalent in the French colonies um, or the Francophone countries. But then for the last ones, like the this one, the Gabon, um, the Niger one, they've all also bothered on um, corruption right. from current leaders. So you can't actually say it's neocolonialism, but definitely there's Western interference Brilliant. in what is happening. All right, all right. Well, we'll bring you, you know, updates as the story goes along. Exactly, and moving on to our next story, one that is still centered on the coup. So the NCCE, that is the National um, Commission for Civil Education, has come out to declare that a coup d'etat is not a solution to our economic roles in Ghana. Mm. So Kaleen Adi, the chairperson for the NCCE, has said the economic hardship currently being experienced by Ghanaians must not give rise to any form of political unrest in the country. She said, we cannot afford to erode the hard-won gains of our democracy. Indeed, when it comes to coup, Ghana has been there. We've done that and we all know for a fact that nothing good came out of it. 
So yes, she's advising not anyone to like, don't get bad ideas, don't get any ideas. So if I am understanding what she's saying, is she aware that people are going through difficult times and this would push them to do? Yes, I, th I think her statement um, would imply that she's aware. Yes, and she's scoring that th there are issues that could push, yes. you know, military or people to say, okay, we are going, you know, to, you know, join the food detail train. So she's exactly. saying that that is not an option. We should choose. Yes, to right uphold on. democracy. I'm sure Ghanaians will have a reply for you. Exactly, exactly. But I also believe that, guys. I understand that there's a need for a revolution, especially in dark times. But under no circumstances, a coup d'etat or a military invasion, that revolution has never really helped any person or any country that has gone through it. So, yes, maybe let's still uphold democracy and find democratic ways to demand accountability and effective leadership from our leaders as Africa. Yes, yes, yes. Now, on to our next story. Now, Mr. Kennedy Japan, we talked about him yesterday and we're going to do the same today. So he was trending Nana, during the NPP delegates conference because he said he was going to give the vice president and the president a showdown after his polling agent was kicked out of the polling center. Now he was brought before the disciplinary committee and he says that the showdown threat saved the life of his agent in North so a new patriotic party flag bearer hopeful Kennedy Ohimie Japon has stated that his immediate reaction to the alleged incidents of threats and intimidation saved the life of an agent who represented him in the northeast region during the party's special delegates conference. He has seen central member of parliament in the early hours of Saturday 26th August 2023 was captured on video expressing fury over some treatment being meted out to his agent. In his moment of anger, the Japon was heard saying he was going to give President Eku Fuadu and Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Maumia, who is also a candidate in the race, a showdown over the incident. Reacting for the first time, following varied public reactions to his outburst, he said in a photo post that his actions on Saturday saved the life of, life, sorry, of one of his agents. He described the treatment of his agents as a case of injustice. I reacted against injustice and that saved the life of, please forgive the pronunciation of the name, Ganyu, one of my polling station agents, in northeast so that is his you know should i say rebuttal his response to people critiquing him for you know saying that in his defense he says it saved the life of a man wow if he says so if he says so i just find it pretty ironic that he would go like such lens to protect his own man when also the family and lovers and supporters of Ahmed, the journalist that unfortunately passed away, wanted to do the same. But uh, let us know what you think, guys. Do you think that in a bit of protecting one man, the supposed disrespect and disregard for authority, especially in the person of His Excellency Nana Danko Kufado and Baumia? Was warranted. Yeah, exactly. Was it warranted? Let us know in the comment section. We are moving on to our last story and coming from the camp of the International Monetary Fund. So, post Ghana's IMF bailout, the fund is saying Ghana's bold economic reforms are yielding positive results. Hmm. The economy is displaying promising signs of progress following a series of robust economic reforms aimed at achieving macroeconomic stability and sustainable growth. Dr. Leandro Medina, the IMF resident representative in Ghana, said, We are witnessing substantial headway in all fronts, restoring macroeconomic stability, ensuring debt sustainability, and laying the groundwork for inclusive growth. Good progress is being made in, in all of these fronts, Dr. Medina told the BNFT. Well, we will need proof to understand what he's saying. He says it is yielding results. Yes. So is it that we're not paying attention or we don't know what's happening in the country? Well, practically, utility bills have gone up, are set to go up in September again. Okay, so and much. exactly. So um, and there's still much poverty in the system, as most Ghanaians are still saying. So we are waiting to see the manifestation of such good progress in the yeah. lives or the livelihoods of Ghanaians. Yeah, maybe it, it looks good on paper. Maybe projections so the reality. and the mapping and a graph makes it say, oh yeah, that's progress. We see some 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 progress creeping in here and there, but we would love to see that uh, reflect in the lives of the ordinary Ghanaian. We will, we will.
has been ABC Highlights. My name is Olga Abustai. And my name is Nana Kwame Bobo. Do log on to www.abcnews.com for your latest news in politics, governance, and sports. Also follow us on our social media platforms. It's ABC News GH underscore. We'll see you.